I'm kind of fascinated by the earliest days of Guns N' Roses and uh, uh -huh. know that there are there were two members people do, usually don't know things about them uh, drummer mm -hmm. uh, Rob Gardner and ba bassist Old Beige there's almost no info about the bassist Old Beige uh, and uh, we could, which you know he was in the beginning of the band back then but do you know how long did, did he stay in the band and why did he leave well, he, he 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 came over to LA uh, in about 1982 um, from Denmark, you know, he, he was from Denmark, yeah. and um, he had played with, with uh, Merciful Fate, and um, I think he may have also played in with some King Diamond solo stuff. Um, and he came over, and I I met him through a friend, and you know he wanted to be in L.A. Guns because you know we were we were a heavy band at that time, and that's when Axel was singing in L.A. Guns, and uh, and Rob Gardner too, the drummer. Yeah. Um, he was somebody I went to high school with, and we basically started L.A. Guns together. He was, you know, the drummer. And um, our manager had fired Axel at one of our shows. Um, and that same night after, you know, he was fired, we all lived together. Uh, we decided that we were just going to carry on, and we changed the name of the band, and we changed the name to Guns N' Roses. And we added Izzy. That was the only real difference in the beginning. So it was Rob Gardner, o Oli Bike. Uh, me, Izzy, and Axel, and um, I think Oli was the first to go. You know, he he really wanted to play metal, and we had turned into more of a blues influenced heavy rock band, and you know, with a little bit of tinge of glam rock in there. And, and he really didn't want to do that. He wanted to do something else, um, and unfortunately, uh, he never found what he was looking for. Yeah. And and you know, and by the time I had left, you know, Guns N' Roses started LA Guns, both bands were doing really well. And um over time, you know, he, he battled depression and um yeah. you know, eventually he, he drowned um in a body of water, you know, in Denmark, uh in yeah. the in the early nineties. And uh, you know, I really loved that guy. You know, he was very very serious guy, but he had a great sense of humor. Uh, he helped me, you know, with with a lot of things. He, you know, he was about ten years older than me, you know. So, good guy. And then Rob, Rob was a, was a, was a great drummer and a cool thing. And his girlfriend gave him an ultimatum when we were in Guns N' Roses. You know, it's either the band or me. So he left the band, and then she left him. So that didn't work out very well either. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, uh, because you're the uh, original guitar player of Guns N' Roses, we of course we heard the story uh, about how you left the band and how yeah. it brought in Slash and everything. But what was your reaction when you first heard the album, uh, their their debut album when it came out, The Appetite for Destruction? Did you hear it right away? And what did you think of it back then? I actually we were recording the first LA Guns record. And um, somebody from Geffen had sent over a cassette to me um, when they had just, you know, finished mastering uh, Appetite for Destruction. Uh, and I went in a, in a separate studio. We were at the Village Recorders. I remember like it was yesterday. And I put that record on and I was blown away. You know, I, I loved it. It was like it was like a brand new, you know, Aerosmith record with more balls. That's that's how I described it yeah. back then. It's like, wow. And then when It's So Easy came on, um, at that listen where Axel had a low and a high voice going at the same time, I was really impressed by that. And, um, you know, I love the record. And, I, and so I went into the studio and I said, hey, guys, man, you know, let's take a break. You got to listen to this Guns N' Roses record. And they really didn't give a shit because it was like, oh, you know, you just care about it because that was your band, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, no, this is a fucking great record. And they really didn't care for it until it came out and exploded in everybody's face, you know? Um, and then everybody decided, oh, wow, that's a great record. But yeah, um, that's, a, that's it's not even a great record. It's a devastating record, you know? It, yeah. it's, it's amazing. I, I, I still listen to that record. Yeah. Okay. But do you think generally when you left the band back in the day, uh, do you think it was a good idea for you or do you think it's 
it's better for them that they uh, moved on with Slash or anything. You know, what what do you ever think about that? Yeah, um, I mean, I haven't thought about it in a long time, but you see, Slash um, was was playing in, in the band Hollywood Rose. Yeah. You know, at the same time, L.A. Guns was rolling around, and that was with Axel and Izzy. So they were kind of already established and had some songs anyway. And Slash actually was a fan of Guns N' Roses. Um, he did our logo and, and a flyer for us and stuff like that. So it, it just made a lot of sense. It made a lot of sense to me. Um, he definitely brought more of a contrast um, between him and Axel, you know, to the live thing. You know, I mean, me and Axel are just like two rocker guys, you know, Slash, you know, really had his image together and really, uh, you know, was was like almost like a, uh, an alien coming in and saving the world. You know what I mean? It was really, really, a, a, the chemistry is undeniable, you know. And um, when I played in the band, um, you know, I was still going through my Randy Rhodes influence and trying to figure out how to, how to, you know, incorporate those styles and stuff into, into what I was doing. And Flash was, all, you know, pretty much already playing the way he maintained his whole career. And that's just, you know, a great blues rock heavy guitarist. And that's exactly what the band needed. And, uh, you know, I don't believe that band would have been what it is today if I had stayed in that band, no. Okay, uh, have you been in contact with anyone from the band at all for all these years, like Izzy or Axel? Do you keep in touch with them? Um, no, I don't keep in touch with them, but I do see them, you know, I haven't seen Axel since 1988, I think. Okay. But, um, you know, I've, talk, I've hung out with Duff a couple times, uh, Slash a couple, I've jammed with Slash a couple times. Yeah. Um, Izzy, Izzy, I think I had, I, we talked in person once about 10 years ago. Uh, and that's about it, you know. I mean, there's nothing, nothing weird there, but you know, we, I don't hang out with anybody really. Thanks for watching, and if you want more music news, just subscribe to Ultimate Guitar TV and press that little bell to get notifications. <laughs>